Dear viewers, you are watching your favorite channel, Dai Jewel 247, and we are having Arogya Chintana presented by Kasturba Hospital Manipal, presenting Arogya Chintana program, and we are having eminent personality and a great patriotic person who served our nation also and is serving as a head of the uh, Department of Neurology and is Professor Dr. Brigadier Shankar Prasad Gorthi. Uh, a great personality is in our studio, is will be focusing on the stroke because on the 29th of October, we have celebrated the World Stroke Day. I welcome you, Doctor. Thank you very I'm much. I'm pleased to uh, introduce our viewers that you have served our uh, nation as a, an army doctor. Uh, can you uh, tell, uh, can you brief yourself, uh, can you introduce yourself, uh, how was your life in the army, how you went there? Yeah, I bo was born in uh, Andhra Pradesh, Kakinada and studied in Usmania Medical College and after finishing my MBBS, uh, I wrote the services examination. After uh, 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 MBBS, the uh, MB MBBS yes. in Osman University. Osman. Then uh, I got a selection into Army Medical Corps. Hmm. Then you join as a captain and uh, you are sent to field areas and high altitude areas where you do for about three to four years of service. And if depending on your service, then you will be selected for further studies. And so I got selected for MD medicine to oh. do in Army Hospital, yeah. Delhi, then I did. Hmm. Then after doing uh, MB, MD, then we were, I was sent to again field area towards northeast, mm -hmm. where I worked in Tanga, Tawang, and Misamari mm -hmm. for about four years. Mm -hmm. Then for your service and your contribution service, they again recognize you mm -hmm. by giving a, an opportunity to study mm -hmm. DM in neurology, which is my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Mm -hmm. So neurology is your favorite Yes. Subject. Then I studied in uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So then I became a neurologist and worked in Pune, Lucknow and Delhi mm -hmm. before my retirement. Mm -hmm. That's before the neurology, I was in periphery. Mm -hmm. When you become a super specialist, then you start treating stroke cases. Yes. That's in brief. Yes. Uh, now, let us come to our uh, topic. What is stroke, doctor? The stroke is uh, a, 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 res a results in inability to talk, inability to work with your hand and leg. That means a type of weakness comes in. Mm -hmm. Right? You will not be you know, corresponding with others you are disabled to walk. Mm -hmm. All this happens because the blood supply to the brain mm -hmm. is stopped. What is the concept of uh, time is brain? Right. You know, nowadays what happened is earlier in days till about uh, say 96, 96, stroke was you know, treated as Varanda disease. Means Varanda. one stroke comes, they He's will gone. be kept in a Varanda and forget about <laughs> it. Where well, nothing can be done. Is over. Over. Hmm. Now, after that, the treatment has come hmm. where if you give intravenous therapy hmm. within three hours initially, hmm. subsequently four and a half hours, if you can give that will lyse the blood clot hmm. and re-establish the blood flow which supplies oxygen hmm. and glucose to the brain hmm. so that neurons do not die. But this has to happen within three hours of time. Within three hours? The, the initial. Hmm. Then they have extended it to four and a half hours mm. with safety precautions. Then now, now techniques have come where you can remove the clot and that you can do up to eight hours. And what is it now? You have to identify that a person had. Now, how to identify? How yes. to identify? So, there, there are, there is very simple uh, uh, teaching which has to be done. Mm. It is called fast campaign. Mm. In a suddenly an individual develops. Oh, what is the fast campaign? Right. Suddenly an individual face mm. droops on one side, mm. right? He, yeah. There is a droop of yeah, face, droops. arm weakness, the arm. It can be any side, right or right left. Right or left. Mm. So it does not function, it mm. just limps. Mm. Even the leg. Even leg or arm, mm. it, it limps. Mm -hmm. Speech becomes garbled, mm. not able to speak. Yeah, especially right hand and right leg, they are weak, speech will get uh, infected definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And time, and with time, mm. I, I already told you what is the importance of time in this. You have to take when these three things happen to immediately a facility where treatment is existing. Now, now uh, there is a uh, problem uh, or there is a myth among mm. the people or among the uh, common people where to go, whether to go to Ayurvedic, whether to go allopathy, whether to go to homeopathy, the, the medicine is not here, medicine is not there, that is not curable, this is not, it's, some myth is there. So, Can you focus on this? No, one of the greatest myths is that there is no treatment for stroke, but that myth has to be cancelled, that is not there. You have to go to a allopathy hospital 
even ayurvedic doctors homeopathy doctors also come there when they have stroke because effective treatment is available nowadays mm -hmm. which is evidence now where they have to come before the 8 hours yes they have to come to kasturba hospital here yeah and wherever the big hospitals wherever alteplase therapy is available mm -hmm. wherever stroke facilities are there nowadays awareness has increased mm -hmm. this drug which is called alteplase recombinant tissue plasminogen activator is available everywhere so, uh, but slightly costly the will come to it at the yes, later stage later. how does the patient recover after the stroke you know stroke can happen to any age it can be elderly middle age and young age normally what people uh, speak that after 50 the stroke comes whether it is true no more than 60 years the stroke incidence is very high right mm. but it can happen in younger people also mm. and i'll tell you why mm. but let's address this issue yeah if a patient has stroke, half of them die, right? And see, another half they recover. And in, in, let's say fifty percent. Out of fifty percent, twenty-five percent more they will recover. The remaining chaps either they are dependent for activities of daily living on others, yeah. or they are bed bound. That is the tragedy of stroke. Mm -hmm. Stroke is the second most common cause of disability and death in whole world. Now, coming to the you have as you mentioned mm. the clot, what is clot and clot bursting and clot removal? See, uh, we we we'll, we'll we'll see a video later. Mm. There is blood supply, heart beats seventy two times approximately. A common man's knowledge. Yeah. yeah. It pumps blood into the brain. The brain requires constant supply of oxygen and glucose. If that is blocked, that particular area which is called neuron dies mm -hmm. right 1.9 million neurons die in a minute time in a minute in a minute time there are billions of neurons mm -hmm. they are con interconnected mm -hmm. interplay of neurons will give rise to our intelligence our speech and every faculty That's if they die the wire is snapped the connection is gone so there will be no information processing mm -hmm. there will be no signal coming to the hands mm -hmm. so that's how mm -hmm. the damage occurs no, what is that uh, thrombectomy? Uh, what yes. is the stroke unit? Ah, yeah, you know the concept has come. If you give special importance to stroke patients, first of all, it has to be recognized by the common man mm. because stroke occurs at any time. Yeah, I said the fast T is there. No, the yes, time. Yes, yes. It can occur any time. It can occur early morning. It can evening, mm. afternoon, mm. but it can occur in a place where there is no doctor. But the nearby people have to identify mm. that this patient had a stroke that has to be brought to the hospital. No, that stroke can be because of rupture of blood vessels or blockage of blood vessels. Mm. More common is blockage. Blockage. You CT scan will prove it. Mm. Once CT scan is done first, you know that it is a block. Then that block can be either dissolved with medicine or it can be removed mm. with the catheter based technique that is called mechanical thrombectomy. Mm -hmm. That is what you are asking about. Yeah, what yeah. is mechanical thrombectomy? Mm -hmm. That is what is removal of the blood clot mm -hmm. with special techniques. We have a video we can show that where the catheter goes mm -hmm. into the uh, blood clot mm -hmm. and removes it. Yes, yes. Uh, viewers uh, will have a glance over that video, uh, then we can understand in a better way how the removal is pos possible. We was welcome back after seeing a small video presented by uh, Dr. Uh, today, today's guest. Uh, Brigadier sir, it gives me pleasure to call you Brigadier rather than Doctor. Uh, what is a WSO that means World Stroke Organization? See World Stroke Organization uh, is a big organization which uh, t brings in awareness about stroke to the people. It, it runs various campaigns. In 2008, it started having this uh, World Stroke Day. 29th October uh, has declared as World Stroke Day in 2008. 2008. Uh, afterwards, every year on that day, there are campaigns run to make people aware about the treatments available for stroke 
and time is brain concept. One more concept has come one in six. What is that one in six? One in six means one in six all of us will have stroke in our lifetime. Hmm. That much is the greatest risk. Now, why people will have stroke? So, there are risk factors. So, one year campaign is that last year they said risk factors to be addressed. Hmm. What are the risk factors you can ask? High blood pressure, diabetes mellitus and serum cholesterol, high hypercholesterolemia, cigarette smoking. These are the four important uh, risk factors. Normally, people do not get their themselves checked. 30, 35 years of age, if uh, blood pressure is checked, then if it is high, you have to take Whether it is uh, hereditary, you told about major four facts, uh, uh, BP, diabetes, uh, heavy smoke, chain smoker. These are called lifestyle diseases. Uh, lifestyle. Any, Any lifestyle means nowadays people eat uh, junk food, not junk food and all types of foods. Mm. Ready without food. any food yeah. with rich in fats rich in carbohydrates right not cooked in home not cooked in home <laughs> also properly <laughs> so increased salt intake there is another uh, big factor mm -hmm. that uh, they take a lot of salt and they consume alcohol they drink so if you have a disciplined life this is okay regular exercise and check your blood pressure and keep it under control and blood sugar levels should be under control and normal and you are doing your physical activity, it is chan there is no chance of you getting a stroke. If you are not doing any of them, then there is a chance that you may land up with stroke. Not that 100 percent, but there is a chance. It is a chance that mm -hmm. your chances are more. Yeah. The last year's uh, stroke campaign is about control of uh, stroke risk factors. Mm -hmm. This year's campaign up against 2018. Stroke, uh, 2018. Up against stroke. stroke. What they are saying is. Okay, you have a stroke, but you can fight it. You can come back. Like we, I, I, I have a support of our team here, occupation therapy, in KMC, spe KMC speech therapy, mm. physical therapy, mm. along with my neurosurgery colleagues, neurology yeah. colleagues, all departments, all right. departments joined together, joined together, and give support to these patients. They are not able to speak the speech therapy. Works. Yes, they are not able to swallow. Mm. The speech therapy people do swallowing test and see how the feeding is to be helped. They are not able to move. After some time, some movement will come, the physiotherapy people will help. The occupation therapy, how to change their clothes, how to dress, how to take bath and these things. Are. So, it is a very team approach. So, neurologists will give medicine. If medicines are not acting and brain is swelling after stroke, surgeons will come and operate. So, we have this big setup in KMC, where the stroke care is given in exemplary fashion. Uh, please revise the stroke facts for the benefit of the uh, late viewers. Yeah, one of the uh, things is that stroke occurs one in six, right? And it is it can affect any age group. It can happen in children also, hmm. right? But reasons may be different. More than sixty years, the most common cause of death. When it strikes in young, uh, we, uh, we can show it in a video. Uh, a person is uh, giving a speech about 45 years and suddenly it happens. Then what happens is he is disabled for life. So, this man has some risk factors like diabetes and hypertension or he may be smoking. So, you have to address. And what nowadays we are doing at KMC is that we are following up these cases. There is a research unit established for stroke. No, it is not the talking part. Right? You know, as there you are three research assistants who are carefully following them. After they go home, they should not go back to these things again. They have to take the medicines regularly. Mm. They have to stop they smoking. They should be careful. So, what we do is we keep SMS messages. Mm. We keep telephoning them. Tracking them. Tracking them. Are you taking medicines? Mm -hmm. Have you stopped smoking or you restarted? <laughs> are you observing the diet? Mm. Or are you doing exercise mm. regularly? Mm. Are you coming for your follow up uh, check of blood sugar? So, these things have to be re-emphasized mm. because stroke can reoccur again. Yes, yes. When these risk factors are there, once it happened, it can happen again also. If the stroke comes again, second hmm. stroke, whether it is more dangerous? Of course, it is more dangerous because one area of brain is already damaged, another area is also getting damaged, hmm. there is more damage hmm. and he will be more disabled, be more incapacitated to work hmm. and he will be a loss to family and society. 
Yes, yes. Uh, do Dr. Um, Brigadier, can you share one uh, example of recent time of yours in KMC? You know what happens in uh, one of the 46 year old man had in his office developed uh, a stroke, right? And uh, means he is not able to move his uh, hand and leg and he is not able to speak. It was recognized fortunately with our campaigns. You know, I have been uh, giving this TV uh, program last year also we gave. Mm. He was brought to the hospital immediately and we did uh, a C urgent CT scan mm. which ruled out the rupture of the blood vessel but blockage of blood vessel is diagnosed. So still it is a big vessel that is blocked. So he has been sent immediately to Mangalore hospital where uh, our radiologist is available there at that time. So he removed the clot and damage is prevented, his arm started uh, working. So that also I think are depicted in the video. Oh, you can see that and he is now became normal. Suresh, how are you? Is it that we can do? Suresh, is it that we can do? Huh? How do you know? Yeah. Is there a botulinum toxin injection? Hmm? Nay, then, huh? There is no time. ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ <laughs> Are you able to walk? Would you like to walk? Okay, come. Let's see. Okay. Come on. 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 Take time. Ah, good. Very good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Very good. Come on. Come on. Come on. One step on the other. कौन से कदम राइट और लेफ्ट इट विल कम श्रेष्ठ विल कम इफ वी डिंट रिमूव द क्लॉट व्हाट वुड हैव हैपेंड वन मिनट 1.9 मिलियन न्यूरॉन्स आर डाइंग विद इन वन आवर ही विल एज 10 इयर्स एंड विद इन थ्री आवर्स ही विल एज 20 इयर्स ही विल बिकम ओल्ड राइट and if he survives he will be a burden to society and family burden to family dear viewers we will have a short break here in arogya chintana after the break doctor will speak about the stroke for the we'll have a small break welcome back to arogya chintana program presented by kasturba hospital manipal and uh, dr brigadier is with us dr is stroke is treatable yeah stroke is eminently treatable nowadays and i told you already there is a treatment called recombinant tissue plasminogen activator injection which has to be administered by vein only but it has to be administered by a, an experienced doctor in a setup where it is possible to give that means at least a zonal hospital nowadays awareness has increased and people are being trained about it if a one more center is there available which is equipped to do angiography we can remove the clot also mm. and uh, it is eminently treatable any uh, key factors that you would like to share with the viewers see uh, once uh, stroke occurs uh, one key factor is recognize it one key factor is you have to recognize it to bring him to medical attention so every individual should know what is the fast campaign again re emphasize you recognize suddenly a person develops droop in the face arm weakness garbled speech and any time of the day it can happen and immediately has to be rushed to hospital that is a key factor that only will survive the patients mm. and because stroke is the commonest cause of disability in the world once stroke occurs as i said 50% will die and only 25% will go back to work so they are disabled that way we can prevent that by instituting correct treatment in the correct time yeah. and also that to treat them in stroke units where comprehensive stroke health care can be given with occupation therapy physiotherapy and other things 
So then, then nowadays things have changed. Mm -hmm. Government also is taking a lead, and in that, that uh, they are providing drug in some states free of cost. Not in all the states. Not but in, in all the states, <laughs> but uh, ideally they should. Yeah. But uh, some people have taken the lead. Mm. They keep recombinant tissue plasma activator uh, injection in hospitals whenever the stroke case comes because it costs about twenty-five to thirty thousand rupees that injection. So many people cannot uh, purchase yeah, afford it. it. Afford it. So mm. government have taken policies to, you know, purchase and keep it. Mm. So these things will uh, are NGOs. Mm. Those people should come. And in fact, I want to propose that a stroke insurance should be because this is. Most common cause. Yes, yes. Most common when malaria, tuberculosis, other diseases put together also. Six point seven million people in a year they have stroke. Six point uh, seven. You can imagine global way. Every two seconds, one chap is having a stroke. Right. So that much is the burden of the stroke, which is not very publicized. Because no, uh, doctor, some uh, diseases uh, or uh, uh, some problems occur in Asia or in Europe. Or an American continent is uh, anything interrelated uh, a continent and a stroke. See, uh, those people are better equipped to deal with stroke. They have realized the risk factors. Ours is a changing society. We are adapting the Western culture. We are adapting their habits. Nowadays, if you will be surprised, the stroke is more commonly seen on low and middle mid-income group countries. The uh, the developing countries. Developed countries, the, it stopped uh, coming down, mm. but it is developing countries which has got more problem. because there is a change in the lifestyle. Mm. These are called lifestyle diseases. And uh, do you find uh, any deficiency in the awareness about uh, this? Most fight? of the people they don't know what is stroke. If you do a campaign, hardly ten to twenty percent people will know what is stroke. Mm. Most of our people don't know who is the correct doctor. For them, <laughs> MBBS doctor is doctor, ENT doctor is doctor, ophthalmology doctor is doctor. But they may not be knowing about stroke management. See, neurologists and physicians are the persons. But for lack common, of awareness among the people, maybe people's, the yes, they don't know the disease, cause. they don't know the correct doctor. Mm. Even if you go to a wrong doctor, say orthopedic doctor, you went, he is good for knee replacement, but he may not be knowing about the stroke unless he develops awareness. So that awareness is lacking even in common people, even in doctors, even, even in so the educated, educated society. People. So that's why our thrust is to spread this message. Even mm. hospital something happens. Mm. People may not realize yeah. that this thing happened unless they are told. Nowadays, fortunately for us, things have changed. Yes. Doctor, can you go back to your uh, army days? Uh, see, you have been uh, serving there as, as a neurosurgeon and uh, somewhere, some part of the northeast or in the north, you have come across the stroke in the army. Uh, uh, sorry, I am a neurologist, not a neurosurgeon, mm. but uh, I have worked in three high altitude areas. The problems are different there. Here also we have a problem in Shimoga and others. What happens here, the blood is thicker, mm. blood is thicker. Mm. What is it called? It is called uh, thrombocytosis, thrombocytosis mm. means the Red blood cells are more, hmm. oxygen is less, hmm. RBCs are more, blood viscosity is more, so there are more number of strokes. So they are not related to the lifestyle, they are different. So in soldiers also you get to have these strokes hmm. because of the after adverse so terrain. Much, after so much of exercise, disciplined life. No, that is uh, lifestyle, but, but suppose if you go to 15,000 feet and start working there, their oxygen is low. So the blood has to carry when more you go oxygen. To oh, yes, when you it, go yes. higher level to the sea yes. level from sea. Yes, from higher level. Mm. Then the blood gets clotted very fast. Mm. There it is not because of lifestyle. Mm. It is not because of diabetes or hypertension. It is different. It is environmental. Mm. So soldiers also don't. Now fortunately we have telemedicine uh, techniques. Mm. They usually they say ki this man has this problem, then we'll immediately they show us the scan through the Skype mm. or to the telemedicine. And we immediately uh, prescribe the medicine. Do you have s such equipments in the army? Yes, here? we have hospitals. Yes, we have at, uh, at key positions, mm -hmm. like Srinagar has, so that you no know, mm -hmm. Sachin people can be helped. Mm -hmm. There are doctors there also who will be guided. Mm -hmm. You do this, you do that. So it's possible. Telemedicine is a big uh, bone mm -hmm. for these aspects. Uh, we have seen uh, so many photographs with the presidents. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, see, uh, I've been fortunate enough to head the Department of Neurology in Army Hospital 
for five years in that time i could uh, uh, see many of them yeah. you see nobody is an exception for stroke and our great uh, late dr uh, abdul kalam sir had a mild stroke yeah. that's how he came because he's an avid reader once uh, he, he fell down in the room and nobody could recognize him because he was inside the room yeah. the problem is that yeah. then he was brought and fortunately you know he recovered yeah. That's how oh, we come across uh, the senior people. Mm. I mean, everybody can have a stroke, Mr. Uh, mm. And I was fortunate that I could uh, meet uh, the great personalities and help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nice of you. Dr. Brigadier, what actions you uh, recommend at the individual level or the government level uh, to fight against stroke? I, I wanted to emphasize at the individual level that uh, they should educate themselves about what is stroke and how to what uh, how to recognize it and how to prevent it not only that this message should uh, be spread for an example is if uh, a student of 11th or 12th class is taught he has to teach six students more those six students teach another six change students system. the chain system mm -hmm. wherever whichever is organization mm -hmm. you start uh, the other day i was uh, addressing manipal group a lot of executives were there and uh, we he taught them so they will go and uh, they get aware so awareness campaign is a must mm -hmm. We have to say that there is treatment available. Please recognize the stroke and bring at individual level. This is at government level. You have to establish stroke units. You have to provide the medicine at cheaper costs. You have to train people in stroke management. You require not only stroke physicians, stroke nurses, and stroke para uh, medical staff also. So this is a team stroke unit has to be developed at at least sub uh, district level and at even smaller levels. And rehabilitation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are various many techniques to have. Mm -hmm. Prevention is another aspect which you have to stress. Like I said, we, yeah, we, yeah. we are involved in uh, uh, Indian Council of Medical Research activities in prevention of secondary stroke. Secondary prevention is called that they have to take particular drugs regularly. They, should, they cannot like antiplatelet agents and these drugs are to be taken regularly. Mm -hmm. So we promptly tell them every month are you taking the medicines regularly right are you stopping so this is re-emphasizing the campaign again that's called sprint trial you know, india has started icma has started something called a instruct that means indian stroke network indian stroke network and there are 26 centers uh, granted by icmr kms is one of them mm. we we develop projects to treat case effectively to take uh, excellent care of the stroke patients so right now two projects are there is a project which is acute ICU setup mm -hmm. how they have to be looked out called a fresh uh, trial fresh trial fever hypertension hyperglycemia in acute strokes this is ICMR so research activities also bring in ex excellent health care to the stroke patients mm -hmm. that also is possible mm -hmm. so government is taking good initiative ICMR is taking good initiative in these spheres yes. it's welcome gesture yes uh, what are the warning signs of stroke warning signs of stroke is if suddenly somebody develops some vertiginous sensation or giddiness uh, and he is not talking properly he wobbles while walking mm. he starts seeing double right or he suddenly no mm. these are the things which it will tell us or he develops some heart palpitations and some spinning sensation in the head these are the warning signs that he may be something wrong with him Okay, uh, how do you uh, reduce the risk and the uh, danger of stroke? Change of lifestyle. Change of lifestyle. If you are a heavy smoker, stop smoking. If you are putting on weight and then you have to do regular physical exercise. Regular physical exercise and diet control and your calories have to be calculated. Mm. 2000 calories a diet day, mm. how much you are burning, how much walk you are doing every day. Minimum at least 5 to 6 kilometers, alternate days at least you have to walk, you have to build your stamina, right? you have to check your blood sugar frequently, you have to check your blood pressure frequently and see it is under control. Mm -hmm. this, these are the factors which will prevent. Mm -hmm. right? The stroke is, uh, may come for the vegetarian also, non-vegetarian? I see vegetarians have got more propensity to develop because there is something called homocysteine which is increased in them. Mm -hmm. That will again cause blood clots. Mm -hmm. Non vegetarians, this problem is slightly less, mm. but it, it can happen in a different way. So, risk is same for both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, 
what are the uh, the disorders after the stroke see after the stroke what happens is first functional disorder you will not be able to write if it is hand the small the finer actions are gone forever hmm. you will not be able to thread a needle you will not be able to write hmm. you will not be able to use your finger you may move the hand a bit but you will not be able to do that and there will be stiffness in the hands hmm. there will be depression because depression. You, depression because depression may cause another problem depression means he knows that he is not able to do it and he sees his peers are doing it it's a depression hmm. spasticity we call stiffness there will be contractures if they are not able to move from bed there will be bed ulcers see everything has to be helped his feeding has to be helped his toileting has to be helped he has to be cleaned he is totally dependent so main problem if he is partially recovered is depression and stiffness in the legs and hands so how do you suggest the improve the life uh, after the stroke after the uh, stroke one important thing is stroke survivors should not get another stroke <laughs> so they have to whatever medicines that are uh, giving given are to prevent the second occurrence of stroke whatever suggestions a doctor gives whatever damage has been done it could have been reverted had he come within 3 and 4 and 1/2 hours yeah. or 8 hours to the center if that is gone next 48 hours are dangerous because the brain swells and then surgical intervention can open the uh, brain and show that the swelling uh, uh, is not damaging the brain and slowly slowly the brain swelling subsides that is called decompressive hemicraniectomy mm-hmm. that also will prevent further damage from the stroke mm-hmm. that is our 48 hours after that the feeding technique if so you no know, there are two problems in stroke one the patient has stroke one is brain swelling which we have said the other one is brain ast- swelling is anything to any, anything related to brain hemorrhage ah, no no brain hemorrhage or infarct what is the See, suppose if you are hit on a hand, mm. there will be swelling. Yeah, like that, brain also swells after injury, okay. and there is only limited c- capacity in the uh, cavity brain. Yeah, this is rigid. So once uh, uh, brain swells, the rigid compartment doesn't yield, so there is internal damage takes place. So what surgeon does is he opens a bit of the brain and puts it here, and re- again replaces it after six weeks. That is called decompressive hemicraniectomy. Mm. So it's vital to be observant in the first. 72 hours when the, the risk is more risk is more mm. after that the swallowing is important you know what happens is food will go into the lungs you don't able to swallow if your feeding technique is not correct you are uh, feeding through rail tube if you feed more it will go into the lungs and then there will be infection comes aspiration pneumonia it is called mm. he is if the position is not changed mm. bed sores will develop yeah, yeah. and there will be infection so these are the various problems which a stroke patient if they weather all these storms within next 2 weeks slowly slowly the recovery comes and gradually they improve yes is it true that stroke responsible for more than 6 million deaths every year that is true it's more than uh, all the to- uh, diseases put together tuberculosis malaria yeah is 6 million people die every year that's why uh world stroke organization has brought in one in six campaign yeah. in 2000 uh, i think 14 mm. then it has brought in uh, stroke and women to emphasize that women also can get stroke mm. so it's true women also gets the stroke women also is less i think it's not less mm. they are not given equal importance <laughs> you know this is a male dominated society yeah. and uh, poor uh, women but normally they say women is a uh, less chance of getting a stroke is it true you know after the menopause it's uh, they chance also have the possibility younger age during delivery they develop different types of strokes mm. is it true that a stroke kills more people each uh, in a year as you mentioned by aids mm. uh, by tb tuberculosis or malaria all to uh, all we put together yes. stroke kills more yes you know before wso launched the campaign that stroke is treatable and stroke uh, uh, can be prevented yeah up against uh, the stroke fight this year uh, it was true hmm. nowadays the stroke can survive better with better facilities we are all developing better facilities to treat this challenge hmm. in uh, our fight against stroke that's true many people die yeah is it true that the stroke is also attacks children yeah children have different uh, type of uh, risk factors it is true you know salt intake to children also should be controlled 
obesity in the children is a uh, harbinger for stroke. So, excess salt intake also should be prevented in children. Mm. Is it true that uh, most uh, stroke are uh, not uh, painful? Stroke, uh, his heart attack is painful. Mm. He will put it down, you must have seen a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, stroke does not have any pain, that is why it is not recognized. He just limps. Mm. Suddenly, if it happens in the night, nobody knows what time it happened because stroke can happen at any time. Any time. And there is no pain. No, not be in the night or uh, in the day uh, yeah. or in the early morning. So, just a limp, limpness, garbled speech and not able to yeah. walk properly. Mm. That means silent. Can 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 you can you have silent? Yes, you can have silent strokes. Silently. What do you mean by silent strokes? Because brain is getting damaged because of the risk factors like mm. diabetes and hypertension, uncontrolled alcohol intake, and all these things will damage the brain. They will develop dementia. Mm. It's called vascular cognitive impairment, and that is because of the silent strokes. Mm. Is it true that uh, in a global scale, stroke claims a life uh, in every 10 seconds? That is true. That is why WSO has launched this campaign every year. It is true. It is true and that campaign is very effective. Now, there are awards for this campaign. Like we did a neurosciences quiz to enlighten or sensitize our students about the awareness of the stroke the other day, 28th of October. We have involved all the undergraduates, postgraduates and all departments. We quizzed them and told them about stroke, how to recognize. They will go and spread the message. Is it true that 80 percent of the people who have uh, suffered from stroke now live in uh, uh, developing countries? As I told you earlier, yeah. the lifestyle diseases. Our lifestyle, we are adapting western lifestyles. Mm. So, there will be changes definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true that incidence of the stroke is growing? It is growing you now because you see younger generation is resorting to cigarette smoking more frequently. It is rampant. They do not do exercise. Everybody is habituated to TV boying. Nowadays the sports and games culture is disappeared. Now video culture has come. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody is, is playing in mobile. Playing mobile. <laughs> they are not doing they are not playing doing mobile football. They but no to, not going to the ground. They have to go back to the ground, play a lot of games. Mm -hmm. they actively you know, indulge in physical uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. Is it true that doctor, a stroke is a second most common cause of death yes. above 60? Above 60, if you uh, remove malignancy, cancer, because cancer of many types can kill patients. Mm -hmm. if, if you remove cancer, even this is first also, stroke is first, because cancer can be of stomach, cancer can be of prostate, yeah. but stroke is unique. So, stroke kills more and uh, you will be surprised. The treatment of stroke is more effective than treatment of heart attack. Yeah. Dr. Brigadier Shankar Prasad Gothi, uh, you have come over on our studio in Arogya Chintana and you have focused on the stroke and you have given your life experiences and especially when you are in the army, how you have served and uh, your campaign and the possibilities and facilities are uh, equipments are available in KMC. You are focused on stroke in a very well manner. I think our viewers are uh, happy to uh, have you and we are also extremely happy to have you here sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, sharing knowledge with us. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dear viewers, uh, this is Arogya Chintana with Dr. Brigadier Shankar Prasad Gothi and coming up uh, Arugya Chintana with another issue with another doctor in coming Saturday. Uh, till then, goodbye.